to me, I would call it the mid mid Atlantic seaboard. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. would have I would have done this reg- but like this, this is... region map completely differently. Okay. <laughs> as I'll I'll be honest, as an amateur cartographer, I think that I can take that liberty to do it. Hello and welcome to the Worldwide Honeymoon Travel Podcast, the podcast that talks about all things couples travel, including destinations, tips, advice, and more. I'm Chris. I'm Kat. And this is episode number 217. Yeah, and I am very sore. We we just went for a 12-mile run. Yeah. Yes. Your last big, big run before... Um, a half marathon that you have coming up. Yes, uh, we're going to do the Louisville. I'm doing the half. Christopher's doing the full marathon. And uh, yeah, I mean, this will be past all of that by the time this goes live because I'm recording a lot of stuff ahead of time since our next couple of months are going to be a little nuts. Well, your next couple of months are going to be a little nuts. Well, yeah, but you're traveling too. Like I basically I'm going to France on Wednesday. I'm there until like basically the end of the month. I have a few days at home. Then we go to Louisville for the marathon. So I'm going to have to try to squeeze in some running days in Paris and like and while I'm in France. Um, And then, yeah, then we come back. I go to Puerto Rico for a conference and work trip and then come back, spend a few days and then we go to South Africa. Yeah. So we have a lot of pre we're doing a lot of these podcast um, recordings ahead of time just because we know that. Not a lot of work is going to get done in the next couple of months for me, at least. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. At least in that way. Like, I'll be, like, recording and doing video. And my goal is to do, like, daily vlogs while traveling. Oh, my goodness. But I'm not, like, holding myself to it because I feel like that's a lot. Well, I'll hold you to it. Okay. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see what... Uh, that would be cool. I, I know that my videos of, like, what I eat in, today, in a day as a travel blogger visiting blank um yeah I need to do some of those I forgot to do those in, in St. Lucia and that would have been such a good video of what I eat in a day at an all-inclusive resort in St. Lucia like that would have made a lot of sense and I just completely forgot because I don't wow. know we just got busy now people will never know what you eat in a day <laughs> do you want to go through it what a sad thing um no I are you sure? No, but those videos do well. Yeah. I don't know. I think they're fun videos. They are fun because then yeah. it's like, oh, what's the local flavors? You know what I mean? I don't, but yes. <laughs> okay. I don't know. <laughs> um, what have you been up to this past week? What's What's been a highlight? Um, well, right now it's Holy Week. So we've had a lot going on with that. And, uh, yeah, I mean, we did a, we went to a Maundy Thursday service, which was a lot of fun. And then we like hung out with, um, the people from our church after, which was a lot of fun too. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that was probably my highlight. Not our run this morning. It was great. No, I really love our runs together, but like they're, they can be brutal at times. <laughs> Were you struggling this morning? Um, a little bit just cause it was like Christopher, is like, let's get up at 6 a.m. and be out the door by 7. And like... Well, hold on. There was a good reason for that. You didn't know about this. Okay, continue. The reason was that so we would get home in time to watch the oh, Tottenham yeah, match. yeah, the Tottenham game. Yeah. Yeah, which we did. Yeah. So that was a good and reason. I did take a nap during that on the couch. I fell asleep. You missed... <laughs> you missed... It got spicy. No, I was up for that. That was good. That was a fun time to watch. Yeah, it it got spicy. <laughs> it got very Ted Lasso very quickly. It, you know, the, the... wow, spoilers. <laughs> Unreal. Episode, what is it, four of Ted Lasso season three? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah, I would say that was that was a pretty fun, um, pretty fun evening as well. I would yeah. say that that was a that was a pretty good highlight. Yeah. Um, I agree. I thought our run this morning was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. It was a good time. Um, yeah. Tottenham's winning today was great. Yeah. Hadn't seen that in a while. Yeah. So that was a lot of fun. That is nice. Um, yeah. Anything else you want to say before we jump into the Southeast here? No. Just getting excited for all these upcoming travels. Yeah. Yeah. I'm excited for you. Thanks. All righty. So... Today's episode, we are going to be continuing a series that we have uh, have been going through 
Um, this was actually recommended from a listener that messaged you on Instagram or some sort of Instagram. Instagram. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and they recommended that we come up with something, one thing to do in each state, mm -hmm. which sounds easy, but at least for me, it has not been. Um, like it's hard to whittle it down to just like one thing. Mm -hmm. And admittedly, I have kind of like stretched the definition of one thing. It's not a defined term. Okay. So I can make it as big or as small of a one thing as I'd like. Um, Did you struggle with this region? A little bit. Yeah, I did. Um, and I'll, I'll kind of like when we get to different states, I'll tell you um, like if I was between two things or something like that. But um the way that it was kind of posed to us is if you can only do one thing in each state, what is it? And like, is it, is it going to be something more like a national park? So like, it's not just like this hike, yeah. right? It's visit this national park or visit this city even, which also helps for some of these. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so this is episode 217. In episode 216, we did the Midwest. Mm -hmm. In episode 215, we did the West. And in episode... 214 am i counting back correctly we I did the so. southwest so now we are doing the southeast mm -hmm. we have been going off of a uh off of like a map that national geographic has of the different regions of the united states so this is actually our second to last one because next um next week's episode will be the northeast which for whatever reason does not include delaware or maryland and i always like yeah I would... maryland's the south really maryland like virginia yeah I always picture Delaware and Maryland as like, I would Is picture this a, them. Like, uh, wait, I put Delaware in, that's in the Northeast. No, Delaware is in the Southeast um, with no, their it's map. Not. Yes, it is. No, it is not. Look it up. Well, I guess I'll have to. <laughs> Look it up. Okay. Okay. Well, I checked the map and it we is checked. in fact. <laughs> well, good thing I've already made all my notes for the next couple of episodes. Does that make sense to you though? Um. I don't know. I feel like sometimes like Delaware is sort of like a gray area. Like it's almost the Northeast. Like it almost to me feels like it's more Northeast. To than me, it I is. would call it the mid mid Atlantic seaboard. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. would have, I would have done this, re but like this, this region map completely differently. Okay. <laughs> as I'll, I'll be honest as an amateur cartographer, I think that I can take that Liberty to do it. All right. Well, I guess we're just going to include Delaware in this list. Delaware is in the Southeast. Apparently. Um, if you guys, if anyone listening is from Delaware, let us know whether or not you guys agree that it is part of the Southeast. Is National, National Geographic just full of it? And we, wow. <laughs> or. <laughs> yeah, it's just like. I was, the Northeast? I was surprised about that. Like I had to like zoom in on the map a little bit to make sure that I was like looking at it right. But yeah, I mean, there it is. Well, and also I'll point out too that like Kentucky sometimes gets like confused between either the midwest or the south and it's sort of like an in-between mm. but culturally regional like according to like regional maps like it is considered the south even though it's in the middle of like it's not south south in the country right you know what i mean right yeah yeah so um i mean yeah. we're learning new things every day it's very true constant growth yeah um so yeah we're doing the southeast um any changes to like how you're approaching it or like do you kind of have it down by now i think i've got a couple like cities that i did versus like i do too yeah i do too so i didn't have that before i had more specific things i have two things on here that i don't know if you're going to be like that is really stretching the definition of one thing okay but i mean we'll see okay. i think it's one thing um should we go ahead and get started? Yeah, let's do it. Kick us off. All right. We're in Alabama. <laughs> no. Like the song? No. Like what song? The state song. What is the state song? I'm not going to. You know what it is. You just want me to sing it, and I'm not doing no, that. No, I honestly do not know what you're Alabama, talking about. Alabama, Alaska, Arizona, Arkansas. I have. I know. Okay. So it's the. Delaware. It's like the. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here we go. Yeah. It's the. It's the song for all of the states in alphabetical order? Yes. I never learned that. It was never taught to me. All right. So I don't know the states in alphabetical order, like off the top of my head, mm -hmm. but like I'm, I'm fairly confident that I could name all 50 states in like under two minutes. 
Okay. I have let's like a, not try it. No, I'm not going to try that on this. But like, that's like, yeah, I had this like little puzzle growing up. Wonderful. <laughs> well, um, all righty. Alabama. What is your one thing to do in Alabama? My one thing to do is the U.S. Space and Rocket Center in Huntsville, Alabama. Okay. Um, so this just seems like it's it's more than just a normal like space uh, museum. Like there's, you know, there's the Air and Space Museum in D.C., both inside the city, but also there's one outside the city as well. Definitely more than that. This actually, um, I believe this is where they have space camp. Space camp? Yeah. You know, it's like a kid. Did you ever hear about that? Like on PBS, it's like talks about space camp. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that. Um, they have a shuttle experience. So they have a flight and a flight simulator. So whether or not you want to pretend like you're flying or um, being in a space shuttle, um, they do that. They also have like, you know, that um, spirally thing. That oh, they put kids yeah. into And it like shifts them around. So that's supposed to like. Is that mimic- after lunch? gosh i hope not but they have that there um they have planetarium shows um the multi-axis trainer that's where it's like the little simulates yeah. tumbling in a rocket sort of thing um is this for kids or adults or both the, uh, this thing you're talking about kids. yeah the museum is well i mean it's a it's a family museum but i'm oh, it's mostly okay. children that are probably doing a lot of this stuff okay. um there is virtual reality snorkeling simulators which is pretty cool like it's very high t- it's very like tech and stuff so it's probably not for like tiny tiny little kids but like a kid that's probably like 10 would have a blast here virtual reality, literally vir- oh <laughs> blast <my gosh>. off. <laughs> virtual reality snorkeling yeah at the air and space museum is that what it's called space and rocket center space and rocket yeah. center i don't know guesses <laughs> but also i know that um because every just time- go snorkeling children okay um no but like i know that um we would go down to Alabama quite a bit because my sister went to Auburn for vet school. My dad went to veterinary school down in Auburn as well. And we would go as a kid quite a bit. And as you're passing by Huntsville, there's that giant rocket on the side of the highway. I think it's a rest stop and there's like an old rocket or something. I have never passed by Huntsville. Oh, uh, well. You're I've only been up. to Alabama once in my life. Oh, yeah. Well, and then what's yours then? Well, mine is Gulf Shores, Alabama. Where you've been in Alabama. Where I've been in Alabama. Yeah. With me. This was our first vacation together. I think it was. Yeah. I think this was our first trip together. It was with my family. Yeah. Well, tell us about Gulf Shores, Alabama. Was that your first time in Gulf Shores or had you been there before? First we time. Went? Okay. We used to go to Myrtle Beach as a kid all the time. Is Myrtle Beach in North Carolina or South Carolina? South Carolina. Okay. Yeah. Never been. Okay. Gulf Shores. I had a lot of fun on that trip. I thought that the Gulf um, had very clear water. Mm -hmm. Um, I remember we snorkeled, not virtual reality, real life. Um, And we were able to see some some fish off of the shore there. They had beautiful beaches. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, good like beach restaurants, good seafood. We went on a whale watch, or I'm sorry, not whale watching, dolphin, dolphin um, dolphin watching cruise. Yeah, um, we had a really good time down in Gulf Shores. We went crabbing, yeah, which was fun. Where we went like trying to f- get crabs. Yeah, not yeah, fishing, I guess, but crabbing, crabbing, yeah. Um, and it was, it was kind of surprising for me because I remember, um. Like, I hadn't, I mean, I hadn't been to Gulf Shores, and I'm kind of thinking of, like, past beach vacations, and it's, like, the Atlantic's a little bit murkier, the Pacific's mm-hmm. a little bit murkier, you know what I mean? Yeah, versus but, the Gulf tends to be a little bit better. Yeah, the Gulf was not uh, not murky when we were there. So, it was, it was very nice. Um, nice. Yeah, Gulf Shores. That's nice. what I picked. All right, well, next up is Arkansas. For Arkansas, I picked... Hot Springs National Park. That's what I picked too. Yes. Yeah. Um, so this was one that I actually was going back and forth between two. Have you been here? To Hot Springs National yeah. Park? As a kid, didn't you guys go through there once? I want to say we did go to Hot Springs yeah. as, a, as a child, but it was one of those trips that I don't remember it. Mm. Um, well, never mind. <laughs> yeah. Um, Hot Springs National Park. I was thinking about putting Little Rock, like going for race weekend. Just that because was really it was such a cool experience. Mm-hmm. Um, 
But Hot Springs National Park. So the big draw here are the ancient thermal springs. But you also have the mountain views. You have um, two bathhouses. Mm -hmm. um, and there is a hotel called the Hotel Hale. Um, it was originally the Hale Bathhouse, built in 1892. Mm -hmm. I think they only have nine suites, if I'm remembering the website correctly. Okay. Um, but each suite has a large soaking tub where hot mineral water it like that's what you fill your tub up with. Oh, that's cool. Isn't that sick? Like yeah. sick as in cool, not sick as in bleh. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> sick as in whoa. Yeah. Um that is cool. That is really cool. But yeah, I I always like hot springs. Um yeah. not Okay. Um like the geological feature. Yes. I always enjoy that. It's a nice feature. It is a nice feature. Um and the cool thing here too about the national park is that it is um, kind of within and around Hot Springs, the town. Yeah. And there are 26 miles of hiking trails. There's forests, too. It's not just like, here's some springs. And you there are no outdoor springs that you're allowed to go and, like, take a dip in. But there are the two uh, thermal baths that are, or the bathhouses bath that are um, supplied with the thermal springs. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. There are areas where you can touch the water. Um, there are like designated areas yeah, yeah, yeah. because I think it comes out of the ground. Again, if I'm remembering the website correctly, it's like between 140 and 150 degrees Fahrenheit. Yikes. But in these designated areas, it cools down enough to, um, to be, be able safe to like to stick touch. a finger in. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, Hot Springs National Park. Nice. Okay. Number three. Is that Delaware? I do not have the um, alphabetized list. Oh, you just put it. Okay. Yeah. All right. Number three is Delaware. Yes. Um, and <laughs> I picked Rehoboth Beach. Rehoboth Beach. Okay. Yes. What is My Rehoboth brother Beach? has been here. Um, it just, it's, it's definitely like an Atlantic coastal town area, um, but it has a boardwalk. Um, there is the Rehoboth Beach bandstand where they have free concerts in the summer. Um, and then in the north is Cape, Cape Halopin State Park, uh, with dunes and an observation tower, but it just seems like a very classic Americana type beach town and beachy, uh, things kind of like Virginia beach. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. Yeah. So there's, you know, you've got the boardwalk, there's all the little shops and things, but then you have like a nice beach area and then north you have that, uh, state park with dunes and things like that. So Rehoboth Beach in Delaware. Awesome. Yeah. Mine is Delaware Seashore State Park. Okay. So there is the Indian River Bridge. Um, so the Indian River is is um, is a big part of the park. Um, there's the Indian River Bridge, which offers views of the ocean and the surrounding area. Um, there's opportunities to kayak, to surf. Um, there's also... Um, the Life Saving Station, which was, um, I think, originally built in 1876, and it offers a historical perspective of um, surfmen who would respond to shipwrecks. Oh, wow. Isn't that kind of cool? That is cool. Yeah. Um, and there's also, uh, within the state park, there's six miles of ocean shoreline, 20 miles of bay shoreline, so... Um, a lot of opportunity for uh, shoreline, um, a whole marathon of shoreline. Oh, one would say. Well, point two short. Um, but yeah, the shipwreck thing was interesting to me because I remember in it was in fifth grade. Mm -hmm. I remember I first learned about like whaling and shipwrecks in a social studies class, and like I I remember when did like, you read Moby Dick. No, no, no. <laughs> But, like, I had this very vivid memory of our fifth grade history textbook. Um, and it had a picture of this giant whale, and there were a whole bunch of small boats around it, and they were, like, trying to kill this whale with a spear because they would use the whale blubber for, um, uh, like, oil, oil for their yeah. lamps and that kind of stuff. Yeah. But they were also talking about, like, how many ships would be wrecked because of these sorts of things or, like, getting too close to land or what have you, right? So... Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know. Shipwrecks have always kind of like fascinated me, I guess. Um, so I think that that's that's kind of like a unique thing with the life saving station in uh, Delaware Seashore State Park. That's cool. Next up, 
Florida. Florida. This is one that I admittedly cheated at a little bit. What do you mean? So I I was thinking about like, I mean, first of all, Florida has a ton of stuff. Yeah. Right? National parks. You have Biscayne. Um, Everglades. Everglades. Dry Tortugas. Yeah. And you also have. Florida Keys. Yeah. I was going to say yeah. you have the Keys. You have, I mean, you have Miami. Yep. You have some great cities and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, you obviously have Walt Disney World. You have Universal Studios. Mm-hmm. Um. I cheated a little bit and I said Orlando as a whole. That's okay. I feel like you copied me. I did not copy I told you. you that. Yes. Um, Orlando, Florida. I just feel like because it's such a unique area. I mean, yes, there are Universal Studios elsewhere. Um, and then there's like Disneyland in California and all the Disneylands around the world. Have you been to Disneyland in California? No. What about I've, the one in Paris? No. I'm kind of saving that because I've always heard about the Disneyland Paris is like, unless if you're like a big Disney person, because there's really nothing that makes it like. It's not like when you go to Epcot and it's like you're in the Paris or the French area uh, or something. Okay. It's like, it's just like going to Disneyland anywhere else, I suppose. So, so I've been to Disneyland out in California. Okay. Disney World is far better than Disneyland. Well, it's bigger. It is bigger. Because you have all of these. It's four parks. Disney World is, you have Epcot, Disney Hollywood Studios, Animal Kingdom, and Magic Kingdom. And I feel like I don't know what Disneyland in California, if it's just Magic Kingdom or it if it includes Hollywood Studios. Well, at least when when I, I went there, it was just yeah, Magic Kingdom. Yeah, I'm not really yeah. quite sure, but I know Disney World is massive. I believe it's the only one that has Epcot, um, maybe Animal Kingdom as well. But Animal Kingdom, I think you could go on a safari type excursion ride. Um, Epcot, I always love. That's my favorite. Um, and that is where they have like the around the world there's different countries that you can stop in a lot of people tend to do the eating and drinking we even have a podcast episode about eating and drinking your way around um epcot which is a lot of fun um and there's a couple of rides there as well but it's a it's a lot of fun there's some really cool um destinations in epcot to check out hollywood studios i believe that is where they have um like the star wars stuff now tower of terror Tower. Although I don't know if Tower of Terror, I don't know if that's maybe still it's there. not still there. It's not still there. Um, Magic Kingdom is where you're going to have the huge Cinderella's castle. That's where you've got like uh, Gaston's Pub because we ran the Disney Marathon several years ago, and that would have been fun. We yeah, and we stopped by there because we all dressed as the cast of Disney or you know Beauty and the Beast. Um, and then Animal Kingdom, which is kind of more Lion King. I think that might have some Avatar stuff as well. A Bug's Life was a there. Bug's Life. Um, Lilo and Stitch was there as well. Yeah. Yeah. So, and that's just Disney. We're not even talking about Universal Studios. And while Universal Studios... Hold on. Before we get to Universal okay. Studios, can I tell you a very embarrassing story about Disney World? How old were you? I want to say like seventh or eighth grade. Okay. Old enough to know better. Okay. Okay. Um, we are on the safari, um, in animal kingdom. It was like our very first ride of the day. Okay. And, um, obviously with like Disney world, there's like the, um, there's like the actors too, right. Mm -hmm. That are on the ride with you and they're kind of narrating. And there was this story about how, I can't remember if there was like a lion cub that had broken away or like there were poachers that came in or something like that for whatever reason. I don't know if I was just like so lost in the story. Mm-hmm. I believed it. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is no longer the ride. <laughs> and I was like in my head about this. And I was like, wow, what a wild experience. And then I can't remember who I was talking to, but they were like, that's the ride. <laughs> and I was like, oh, and I'm like spinning this tale of like hijinks and like, like adventure. And they're like, that's the ride. The whole thing I was mean, controlled. <laughs> that's good on Disney, though. It was incredible. If they can literally convince a seven, eight-year-old child. No, no, I mean, no. I don't know what seventh that says. Or, about... Seventh or eighth grade. Oh, you know, maybe that's more on you. <laughs> I was in honors classes, okay? like <laughs> They should have reevaluated that after. No. I think I had read, like, the like Homer's Odyssey by then. And <laughs> here I am thinking that, like, this is real. Well, it, that either says a lot about the quality of Disney's rides or the quality of your public education system <laughs> you that know, you it's, experienced. It's one or the other. <laughs> um, but you were about to talk about Universal Studios. We went there when we ran um, a half marathon in Disney World. Yes. I also wanted to point out, too, with Disney, there's also Disney Springs, and that's where you have some of the cool hotels, like the Grand Floridian yeah. and uh, like the Polynesian 
hotel i forget what they're all called polynesian cultural center there's um no that's in hawaii <laughs> or, i'm sorry that is in hawaii <laughs> there is a polynesian um, hotel there's a um, uh there's a caribbean hotel um mm-hmm. that's where we stayed and it had a uh, it had a pretty cool pool with like a water slide um the grand floridian has um it's it's made to look like hotel coronado yep in, um yeah in san diego and i believe that's the hotel that has like a sandy beach but Disney, the Imagineers are so inventive because they made the sand, but it's not like they just brought in sand. They actually engineered the sand that would feel like sand, but it doesn't stick to you. It's not sand. Well, it's not real sand. They engineered the quote unquote sand. What are you walking on over there? Plastic? I don't know. Are these bottle caps? I have no idea, but they made the sand to where you can like lay on the sand and it's not going to like st- like be stuck to you or like get stuck in between your toes when you're trying to leave and like Disney is fascinating. Isn't to that me. insane? Or they pump um the smell of cookies into yes. the air in Magic Kingdom. I can attest that that has to be true because we ran through It was so good. the like main street yeah. in like during our run and it's before any of these shops are open or baking and stuff and it smelled like cookies. The amount of hours I have spent reading about like Disney Easter eggs or behind the scenes stuff yeah. on Reddit or online. Like people yeah. do like ask me anything. Like I used to work at Disney, like that kind of stuff. It is fascinating. Like I, yeah. I, I have no idea if this is true because I've never like seen it with my own eyes, but apparently one of the ways that they keep the lions like active during the day on the safari ride is they will have vents no, I, that are I've heard that, yes. In the rocks so that they will be like lying on top of the vents to cool down, but they'll and also be- it looks be like l- Pride Rock. It does. Exactly. And so I'm like, it looks this like is... the lines are on there, but it's full of like cold air. So like when they're hot, they'll just lay on that during the day. Just <laughs> wild. Like like I said, Disney is The way they move garbage, there's like underground tunnels. Yes. And that's how they move garbage. It's also, I guess, how some of the characters can move from one side of the park to the other without, you know, being constantly stopped. Astonishing. So they can get to where they need to go. But Astonishing. Fascinating. And then, yeah, you've got Disney Springs where it has, I think, is it the ESPN? ESPN zone or yeah, something like so that. There's yeah. like a bunch of cool stuff in Disney Springs, too. So that's worth checking out. I mean, you could just do Disney for a week. <laughs> easily. <laughs> easily. Um. Then again, in Orlando, also Universal Studios, lots of really cool things there. But I would say the biggest thing is Harry Potter World. Absolutely incredible. As yes. as a child who kind of aged with those characters. No, yeah, same. Um, it was it was exactly how I imagined it. It was exactly how it looks in the movies. I almost it was, cried. Yeah, it was so lifelike. It was so cool walking around the things, riding the Hogwarts Express. That was really cool. Yeah, um, the ride, the Gringotts ride, was a ton of fun. That is my favorite ride I have ever been on. I like the Leaky Cauldron. Yeah, Hogsmeade. Everything was cool. Got a pumpkin cal- or a cauldron cake. Yeah. Yeah. We didn't buy a wand, though. But I, people well, that bought wands, there was like certain tricks you could do in certain areas where if you waved your wand, it would like do we things. We have collected our first chocolate frog card. Oh, yeah. 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 Yep. It was there that uh, we also purchased some Gryffindor memorabilia because we took the Pottermore quiz or whatever Pottermore is now. You found out that you're a Gryffindor. I always thought I was Ravenclaw. and Nope. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Turns out I'm not. Alrighty, Orlando. Orlando. Yeah. I wasn't going to pick just one cool. thing. Orlando. There's a lot to see in Orlando. All righty. Um, I don't have the alphabetized list in front of me. I apologize. Is Georgia up next? Georgia is up next. Okay. Um, so for Georgia, I chose Savannah. Okay. I did too. Okay. Um, and largely because when you got back from Savannah and your Tybee Island trip last year. Mm-hmm. Savannah just seemed really, really cool. It was really, really cool. <laughs> um, and I think, so I think a lot of it was like the way that you were describing it. Um, but just with like the history and kind of the um, the eerie aspect to it. Um, isn't that where you went on some ghost tours? I think it's, if it's not the most haunted city in the U.S., it's one of them. Do you and believe in ghosts? Yes. My mom for several years was a cardiac nurse and she worked in a hospital and she used to work nights. And she was like, if I didn't believe in ghosts then, I do now. Like, she saw so many things, and she has so many stories of, like, of like apparitions that she saw. I 100% believe in ghosts. Mm-hmm. I don't think there's a downside to doing it, because then they don't feel the need to, like, prove their existence to me. Yeah. my, You know, here's my thing. I'm like, it's cool if you exist. 
just I won't you know I mind my business you mind your business we'll be fine you know what I mean yeah yeah I mean I think that that's just like general interactions with anyone <laughs> you know like, now don't go like opening a door on me unexpectedly I do not want that <laughs> yeah or like throwing plates off the shelves yeah, there's no need for that yeah no. <laughs> go to bed um but yeah, Savannah's really, um, I mean, I don't know, just like the way that you described it. And there was that restaurant, too, that sounded really, really neat. Um, are you going to talk about that? Let me just talk about Savannah, Why too. don't you talk because about your there's trip? More, there's more to it than just like the ghosts. Um, although I did go on, because I'm afraid of ghosts a bit, you know what I mean? Um, I did go on a ghost bar crawl, which was actually, I was like, look, if I'm going to do a a tour of Savannah about ghosts. I'm going to need a little liquid courage for it. And so I went on a very funny um, tour with a local guy and he was very funny. And we went to all of these haunted bars and like drank at the bars and we learned about the, like the stories behind him and stuff. So that was really cool. But aside from that, there are several squares that are lined with homes or shops and things that are absolutely stunning. Um, you could just go wander around the squares at all these different places and there will be either statues or memorials or things like that. Um, great restaurants, uh, Forsyth Park, which has the big fountain, um, is very, very popular, but the restaurant you were talking about is, um, the Gray, which is built in an old, no, I don't think that's the one, the old, uh, Greyhound station. No, it was. Okay. That was very good. I got a tasting menu there. There was a woman's name in the Mrs. one. Mrs. Wilkes Dining Room. There it is. Dining Hall. Um, so I went, it was 2021, so they were still doing it where it used it used to be served family style. You would just go in the restaurant, they would sit you down somewhere with people you don't know, and then they would just pass around all this food, and you just eat it. And it's fried chicken, mac and cheese, like all the fixins, like everything. And when I went in 2021, you'd have to order and it was all takeout or there was a few seats in the back, like um, on the patio. But I remember I got there at like 1115, 1130. It opened at 11. I had to wait like an hour to order. And then it was an additional hour before my food was ready. That is wild. But it was so worth it. And I all I did was order like this is Southern hospitality for you, because all I did was order two pieces of chicken and like some mac and cheese because I was like, I'm not like that hungry. When I went to go pick it up, um. I was given like three or four pieces of chicken and pretty much a little bit of every single side, a dessert and like all this stuff. And I what was, was like, what was a dessert? Oh gosh. I think it was like banana cream banana pie. Cr- oh. oh my gosh. But like I, I was given so much stuff. I think there was like cornbread and all these delicious things. And I was like, Hey, I didn't order all this. Like, I don't, you know, I feel bad. Like you're only charging me for what I ordered. And they're like, Oh no, we just thought we'd give you a little extra. And I was like, this is so nice. <laughs> It was it was fantastic. I got a lemonade too. Oh, so good. And every like tea is just sweet tea there, which is fantastic. I love sweet tea. It's just like on demand sweet tea. But like anyway, I can go on and on. Uh, fantastic food. The Basilica, Cathedral Basilica of St. John the Baptist is beautiful. And then also Bonaventure Cemetery is a very scenic cemetery um, near some marshlands. And it has those um, old oak trees with the uh, Spanish moss and stuff. So just Georgia, it's a very, or Savannah is a very, very beautiful town to go and check out in Georgia. All right. Yeah. Next up, home state. My home state of Kentucky. Do you want to go first? You how, go. First off, how hard was it for you to pick one thing here? It was tough. Do you want to go through the list of things that you were considering? Sure. Okay. Why don't you throw out your contenders and we'll see if mine is on that list. Okay. Um, I will say... Um, Keeneland, well, like a lot of the horse racing places. Uh huh. Um, the Mammoth Cave National okay. Park. Um, Lake Cumberland. Okay. Um, lots of lakes like Lake Nolan, things like that. Louisville, Lexington. Okay. That okay. sort of thing. A Red River Gorge. Okay. Um, uh, which is awesome. That has like natural bridges and cool stuff to do there. Um, but what I ended up settling on was the Bourbon Trail. I thought so. Yeah. Because that was the only thing that you hadn't mentioned that I was like. Is that what you picked? Um, I actually wrote down the bourbon trail and I crossed it out. Okay. Well, let me tell you why. Because okay. I mean, I like bourbon. All right. It's good. Um, that was but a ringing endorsement. It's good. It's good. It, I mean, it, I, I enjoy bourbon. But like the great thing about the bourbon trail is it's between Lexington and Louisville. It stops in various places along that area. And it there are so many wonderful, beautiful um 
bourbon distilleries, but a lot of them are in the middle of the country. And so you're driving past, especially like if you go to Woodford Reserve, you're driving past beautiful thoroughbred horse farms, rolling hills. It is absolutely stunning countryside down there. Some of these distilleries have been around for like 100 plus years. There's a lot more newer ones too, but... They, I think it includes 42 distilleries, if I'm remembering correctly. It's a lot. And there yeah. even ends, if you start from Lexington to Louisville, the Louisville has the urban bourbon trail where they actually have um, distilleries in the city of Louisville in an area. Um, but Lexington also has a couple, um, like Town Branch we went to. Um, of course, some of the favorites, there's Woodford, there's Makers, there's Red, F- Red Four Roses, um, things like that. Wild Turkey. I could go on and on and on. Um, but... Yeah, it's just such beautiful country land that you're driving through. So it's also just equally beautiful if you're the DD just to look around and see how beautiful the land is. And then also great bourbon. Usually they're selling things like bourbon balls or bourbon syrup, things like that that you can enjoy too. Um, It's fascinating taking a look at all of in the distillery because you have these giant vats of them making the bourbon. And then there's also, you know, you go in these old barns full of aging bourbon which is fantastic it's just I love I highly recommend taking a tour I know Maker's Mark you get to dip your own bottle if you want to at the end Um, but another cool thing is that you can sign up and do a 200 ish 200 ish mile relay called the bourbon chase what if you don't want to do it as a relay I, everybody's it's a relay it's a relay team I'm just kidding where yeah you guys take turns running a certain amount of miles and it's it's along the bourbon trail and it's very beautiful and scenic are we doing can, this? I'd like to one day. I think that would be a lot of fun to do the bourbon chase. That would be pretty cool. Yeah. So bourbon, yeah, the bourbon trail in Kentucky, it's highly, it's so worth it. You could spend a few, you know, several days staying in different cute bed and breakfasts and stuff and and going to bourbon uh, distilleries. Yeah. What is I, your uh, Yeah, I had the bourbon trail written down. Um, and the big draw for me, I like, I will drink bourbon, but I have to be in like the right mood for it. Mm-hmm. Pretty much. It has to be like cold and in the winter. Yeah. Um, I think that's kind of the right time to, to drink it. I am you know? not like, like, I am not someone that can just like sit down and be like, oh, I'll have a glass of bourbon tonight. Mm-hmm. It's just, I don't know. It's not me. Um, but the big thing for me was like driving around. Mm -hmm. Um, because like you said, just absolutely gorgeous. I ended up choosing Mammoth Cave National Park. That it is very cool. I have never been. Um, I have talked about wanting to go for a long time and I have just been brushed aside. Um, no, it is, it is the world's (laughs) longest known cave system. Yes. There are a ton of caves in Kentucky. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. The uh, the national park offers cave tours, hiking, water um, water activities like canoeing, kayaking, that sort of thing. There is um, there's fishing, there's biking, um, there's horseback riding, and um, the the big draw obviously is is the cave. There are eleven different um, cave tours. Yeah, some Rain. are super easy, and then some are literally like you're splunking, like you have to, like you're gonna get wet. So yeah, they range from a half an hour, or I'm sorry, um, well, hold on, I have half one half mile to four miles written down, but I think it's a half hour to four hours if yeah. I'm remembering correctly. Yeah. The four hour tour also includes 640 stairs. Yeah. Guess which one I want to do. That one. Is yep. there a zip line thing you can do in the caves as well? I can't remember. You know, I'm not sure. That might be just in like around Louisville. There's like a underground caves that you can like zip line in. Okay. It's uh yeah. I'm I even remember like when I was living in Lexington at school, um, one of my friends, like we went out to like I don't know. I don't know. We went somewhere just outside of Lexington and we found like a cave and just like went inside of it like we just like scroll crawled around inside of it because it was very little but like yeah it was crazy that was safety first it Um, was a long time ago but yeah there's just caves everywhere in kentucky so cool yeah um louisiana louisiana what do you Um, have new orleans i do too i mean that's like certainly an obvious choice i guess because you've never been have you no i was supposed to go for a travel blogging conference um yeah a long time ago but then COVID hit um but New Orleans, most people are familiar with it because of Mardi Gras or Fat Tuesday um, and the parades and things like that. Um, But when you're not there during Mardi Gras, um, 
there's the Mardi Gras World, which is a museum dedicated to floats and decorations of Mardi Gras past. Um, There's also the Jazz Festival, which is a very fun time to go down to New Orleans as well. Um, Of course, you have the Bourbon Street area, which is known for, you know, lots of partying and going out, a lot of bachelor and bachelorette parties, Um, and then the French Quarter Hotel, Um, and then, or the French Quarter, um, the St. Louis Cathedral, um, the Garden District, um, beignets at Café du Monde is something I have written down, but then a lot of Cajun and Creole food. Oh. So the food alone, I mean, you've got po' boys, you've got jambalaya, you've got etouffee crawfish etouffee like so many delicious things um so very much a foodie town i would highly recommend that if you go find a good food tour i feel like that would be a fantastic idea for new orleans yeah yeah um i wrote down new orleans as well one of the (laughs) things that you you touched on that was kind of like a big draw for new orleans to me was the jazz Mm -hmm. aspect of it um as a former alto saxophone player, okay. um, first chair alto saxophone player, um, I participated in jazz ensemble, and I like that was like the end of my jazz education. Um, was in eighth grade. Until, I would love to go to jazz fest. That would be fun. Until college, and I took a history of jazz course, which was I think probably my favorite course that I took in college. It was it was just amazing. Um, and it kind of like reignited that whole, um, that interest that had kind of like laid dormant there for a while, which was, which was really cool. But yeah, I think the, um, the jazz aspect would be, would be really, really neat. Yeah. Next up. Maryland. Yes. Are you sure? Yes. I don't know what, what do you I, have next. I don't know what I did, but for whatever reason, I put Maryland and Delaware in my Northeast notes, and I have the notes. Okay. But Maryland is next. Maryland is next. Um, um. <laughs> and I have Ossetigue Island National Seashore. Okay. I have Ossetigue uh, State Park. Okay. Which is, I'm guessing is on the seashore. And uh, what uh, what drew you there? Was it the wild horses? Yes. <laughs> well, so the marshes have deer and wild horses. Mm-hmm. Um, there are lots of little coves, beaches for swimming, beach combing, fishing, surfing, crabbing, crabbing. Um, it is bordered on the east by the Atlantic Ocean and the west by I cannot pronounce this bay, but Sinapuxent Bay. Um, and then it's on Asati is you said Asatigue? I'm saying Ossetigue. Ossetigue Island. And it is the Maryland's only ocean park. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Pretty or cool. But yeah, yeah wild have. horses were, that was a big draw Yeah, the me. wild horses. I think that's pretty cool to see. I think that would be neat. I know that there's an area in Virginia as well. It may be in Shenandoah, but I think it's no. in Virginia that has I wild think ponies. I it's like a beach destination, but I okay. don't know. Okay. It has wild ponies though. Don't quote me on that. I yeah. won't. <laughs> I think that would be pretty cool. Yeah. Um, all right. If you turn back to your Southeast notes, um, Mississippi. Mississippi. I have so much written down here, and I put the Mississippi Delta. Okay. 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 Why don't you go for the Mississippi Delta first? All right. I Was this based on somebody feed Phil? Uh, yeah. I mean, we've seen like- Great episode. We've Fantastic episode. Also, I believe um, Anthony Bourdain did a Mississippi Delta episode. My boy. Fantastic. It is where the blues- came to be but let's talk about some of the history of the blues i think this is um you know there's a lot of history behind it so after the civil war in the south um there was a lot of abandoned farmland and different things like that so freed um enslaved people as well as white settlers moved in and then because of systemic racism and other things um about two-thirds of the the or it was two-thirds black owned at that time people stopped you know not having funding and things like that and they were it very much was a struggle for um for black citizens there so um it kind of because they were stripped over their land over the years and it was very hard living this is sort of how the blues genre came about was their way of expressing that emotion and and singing about it so that is where you got the blues um and the mississippi delta is in quite a, a few states but it's in the northwestern part of mississippi and some things to see here is the delta blues museum it is located in clarksdales um 1918 train depot 
and it is the oldest music museum in Mississippi. And it talks about the history and the sound of the blues, instruments um, from famous artists, including B.B. King or P. Yes, B.B. King. Sorry. Yeah, you're right. B.B. King. Um, then also in Clarksdale, you have the Cathead Record Store, Bookshop and Folk Art Gallery and Visitor Center. Um, do you do you have any more things you want to jump in on? No, 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 no. Keep going. Okay. Keep going. All right. The Ground Zero Blues Club owned by Morgan Freeman and former Clarksdale um, mayor. Uh, Bill Luckett. So it has, um, hang on, I'm trying to read my writing here. Um, it has some of the best blues acts in the area. Uh, it is Southern, it has lots of Southern food, which again, I love Southern food. So we got fried catfish. So good. Um, pulled pork, fried chicken, fried green tomatoes, and turnip greens. You can get lots of that sort of food there. Fantastic. Um, there's a Grammy museum in Mississippi, known as the birthplace of American music and home to more Grammy winners and nominees per capita than any other state. So they have that. And that is the notes that I have on Mississippi for the Mississippi Delta. I think this would be a phenomenal road trip doing the Mississippi Delta. So I was just going to say, I really, this was a ton of fun preparing mm-hmm. for this episode, really this whole series. So thank you again. Um, Carrie was the one who recommended yeah, it, I believe. thank you. Um, how much fun would a trip Arkansas, Louisiana, Mississippi be. Mm-hmm. Mississippi, I have something similar, but again, this is one of those where I like kind of stretched what one thing can be. Mm-hmm. I have the Mississippi Blues Trail. Oh, okay. So the Blues Trail goes from Memphis down to New Orleans. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. I have the Mississippi part of it as my one thing to do in Mississippi. Um, a lot of the things that you already said are um are included on mine so i'll kind of just and it seems like clarksdale is a big stuff. big um clarksdale's huge for huge blues yeah for this area yeah um so some things that you did not mention that like you could include on a mississippi blues trail itinerary um the restaurant that claims to be the inventor of the fried pickle one of my personal favorite pub appetizers Wow. Um, Did they fry the whole pickle Hollywood or Cafe. is it pickle chips? Um, you know what? I don't know. Hmm. It's it's pickle, it's batter, and I think they have like chili oil um, mm-hmm. or something. Yeah. Um, but so there's that. Um, Clarksdale is also home to the Crossroads, which is the rumored location of where blues musician Robert Johnson mm-hmm. sold his soul to the devil so that the devil would teach him how to master the guitar. Oh. Yeah. So do you know um do you know who Robert Johnson is? No. Okay. So um not jazz, blues. Yeah. Um but Robert Johnson was someone that we learned about in that class that I was telling you about. Mm-hmm. Um he incredibly influential, but also um died very very young. I want to say that he only recorded for like 2 or 3 years um before he died either late 20s or early 30s is there are the is he part of the 27 club um i'm not sure the 27 club is a um is where a lot of famous artists kurt cobain amy winehouse etc they passed away at the age of 27 i don't oh well maybe i'm i'm not sure yeah i'm not sure but um really an artist that wasn't like incredibly famous in his during his lifetime but um really had a profound effect on not only blues but a lot of musicians as well yeah. um but yeah so the crossroads is that location that there's the whole rumor that sold a soul yeah. to the devil um which i mean anytime there's an urban legend count me in um you mentioned the delta blues museum yeah i think um, there's also the Rock and Roll Heritage Museum, the Highway 61 oh. Blues Museum, the B.B. King um, Museum. Wow. There's also Club Ebony, which has hosted um, famous artists over the years, such as Ray Charles, mm-hmm. um, who performed there. So just the whole way to like, I mean, it's it's like I said, it's kind of cheating to call it one thing. Yeah. But it's the whole trail itself, I think, would be, well, would it be all pretty kind of darn cool. It revolves around the blues as well. It does. So I think that's like a pretty good category. Because I Thank did you. California. I was like, wine, and then like talked about wine regions Yeah, of that's true. So you I know what? Like I don't feel bad. This counts. This I don't counts. feel bad. Um, the next state is North Carolina. And I am going to continue with this feeling of not feeling bad because I chose the Blue Ridge Parkway. Oh, okay. Talk about it. Um. 
so the Blue Ridge Parkway connects Shenandoah to Great Smoky Mountains National Parks. Okay. Um, and there's just a whole bunch of different kind of stops that you can make. It's it's a um, it's a slower drive. I think the speed limit's like 45 at the max. Um, whole bunch of stop offs though. Um, there is the Mile High Swinging Bridge. There's Linville Falls, Linville Gorge. Um, there's Crabtree Falls. There's Mingo Falls, um, Soco Falls. There's Graveyard Fields. Um, there's there's an Arboretum that you can kind of, um, I, I don't know how far it is off the Blue Ridge Parkway, mm-hmm. but there's, there's a lot of um, stops to do. But um, great hiking, great trails. Um, I can't remember the name of the trail right now, but I know that there is one where there's kind of like a pride rock cliff. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, I mean, if you Google um, or or if you do a search for images of the Blue Ridge Parkway, beautiful, Mm -hmm. beautiful scenery um, and very popular to drive that in the fall. Yeah, I bet. Um, My North Carolina is my favorite city in North Carolina, Asheville. Asheville is fantastic. I've been a couple of times. Not only is it home to the Biltmore, so that's very famous to go and visit, um, and there's plenty of gardens and beautiful trails to walk around the Biltmore as well as visit the house, Um, but it is also an adventure place to go to. There's lots of hiking nearby, whitewater rafting, zip lining, things like that, Um, but it is a huge brewery town, so fantastic breweries everywhere. I mean, it is literally, you could walk to various breweries uh, very quickly, so Such a fun town for the brewery scene, the food scene. There's lots of really good food there. Um, Lots of folk art and different things like that and some quirky things. I know there's like a tea shop that's in a bus that's just like parked somewhere. Um, But then you also have, yeah, lots of good Bamari brewing. I really enjoy. You've got Wicked Weed. That's where it got its start. Um, And then, of course, I a really cool hotel to stay at is the Omni Grove Park Inn. And we went for brunch uh, during one of our friend's bachelorette parties there, but Um, that's a fantastic hotel that you could stay in. That's a luxury hotel, um, while you're visiting Asheville, North Carolina. Awesome. Yeah. Heading down South. To? South Carolina. Yeah. What did you pick here? Um, I picked Hilton Head, South Carolina. Um, so I visited Hilton Head a couple of times, beautiful sandy beaches. Um, it is known for its golf scene, so if you like golfing. Uh, but it's just such a relaxing island that you can just bike around. Um, that's where you get the famous Salty Dog Cafe is there. Uh, lots of fun boutique the shops. The shirt that everyone had oh my in gosh, everyone. I middle had one. school, elementary school. I never had one. That's because you didn't go to the Salty Dog. I've never been you to the Salty Dog. You got to go to the Salty Dog in Hilton Head, South Carolina. Um, it's such a beautiful place. Um, a lot of people, I guess, there's a lot of people that retire down there too um but yeah hilton head south carolina i've been to south carolina so many times mostly to um wow to myrtle beach well that's my mom is from isla so palms t- south that's carolina right. that's um, right. and she grew up and went to the college of charleston for a bit before she went to university of kentucky and met my dad um yeah so but i really like hilton head a lot hilton cool. head, south carolina yeah i chose congaree national park Oh, yeah. I love national parks. You do. Sign me up. Um, hiking, canoeing, kayaking. Um, but the the big draw to Congaree is the boardwalk trail. Mm-hmm. Um, and that allows you to walk under um, the world's tallest forest canopy. Hmm. Um, the average height of the canopy, 100 feet. Wow. Yeah. Um, with some trees getting to um getting to over 170 feet isn't that wild that's crazy yeah it is um i mean that's almost a hold now hold on that's like almost uh, that's over half a football field yeah isn't that wild mm-hmm. um but yeah congaree there i'm the image that always comes to my mind is the boardwalk mm-hmm. um and with like all of the vegetation and the trees and all of that kind of stuff around it. So, um, yeah, Congaree National Park. And can I just say a pro tip if you guys go and visit like North Carolina, South Carolina, like Alabama, that area, you're going to see signs at gas stations for boiled peanuts. Get them. And you're going to want to get them. It is the best. Get the spicy ones. So they have Cajun boiled peanuts that are the spicier ones, or you just have regular salted boiled peanuts. But like, Get the Cajun. You crack it open and you have like kind of these like sort of squishy but still lovely 
peanuts and they're nice and salty from that briny salt water they're mm. so good they're mm. so good and like every it seems like almost every gas station makes them and then there's always like roadside stands that are selling boiled pe- boiled peanuts <laughs> and you have to get bulb peanuts there you go <laughs> Um, next we have Tennessee. Tennessee. I have the Great Smoky Mountains National Park. That's what I have as well. I was thinking about Nashville. I was thinking about Memphis, but mm-hmm. I, uh, I chose that as well. Um, yeah. We had a great time. Yeah, we went in 2020. It's we our, did. One of our only trips we took in 2020 was down to the Smokies. Um, we started off with Baskin Creek Falls. We hiked Mount Camerer. We hiked Mount LeCant. Um, on a very foggy, rainy day. Yes, <laughs> and saw I nothing. would. I would actually recommend that if you are going to go there, and if you don't mind like carrying your, I don't want to say supplies, but like with whatever backpack or luggage you're bringing, if you would be comfortable hiking up a mountain with that, um, I would recommend staying at the Mount Lacant Lodge if you yeah. if you have the opportunity. That um, would be fun, and if they have the availability. Um, but there's a ton of stuff in the Smoky yeah. Mountains. Wildlife. You got black bears that we didn't see. Well, we went um, with you. But I think it's really, really fun um, to stay in cabins um, yeah. when you're there. So there's so many cabins on like Verbo and Airbnb and stuff that you can rent out. And a lot of them have like hot tubs. And it's just like this. It's it's such like a it's such a vibe. You know what I oh mean? Oh, my gosh. Like it's like it's very like log cabin There's usually a fireplace. Heart-shaped your, tub. There sometimes is a heart-shaped tub. There are bear paraphernalia everywhere there's like bear like wooden bear statues and signs when you went as a kid yeah to the smokies did you ever see a bear then like have you ever I seen a live bear maybe maybe we did when we drove around cade's cove which cade's is a popular cove, attraction yeah. clingsman dome clingsman dome that's the tallest peak in um in the smokies um that you can drive to and then you just walk up the thing i remember doing that okay as a kid um but yeah also great cities. You have Gatlinburg, Sevierville, Pigeon Forge. Lots of great um, s- like uh, Southern cooking again. But Pigeon Forge has Dollywood. You know, we love our girl Dolly. Um, so there's lots of fun like amusement parks and or like things to do sort of in those towns too. So the Great Smoky Mountains National Park for sure. Awesome. Next up is Virginia. I we have, have the same thing here. Shenandoah National Park. I have Shenandoah as well. Yeah. Um. So... There is the opportunity, obviously, for hiking. Um, we hiked Old Rag, cloudy day, didn't see a thing. Didn't see a thing. But and it was a very challenging hike. <laughs> really enjoyable hike. Um, we also drove Skyline Drive, which is um, within Shenandoah. It's about 105 miles. And we did the whole thing and stopped off and did a couple hikes. Yes. And um, I will say one of the biggest, the coolest ones we did was at mile 10.4 on Skyline Drive and that was to go see the basalt columns. Yes. Those were those were incredible. Um yeah. not a long hike either. I think it was no. like an hour total, but the basalt columns, we also stopped off to see Dark Hollow Falls and Doyle's River Falls. Yes. Um we ate our weight in blackberries. Yep. Um and a particular shout out here. Um it is not in the park, but Far Gone Brewing is down there and I had one of the best blackberry gozes. Yeah. Do you remember that? Those were so good. So good. And then, of course, you have a chance to see some more wildlife, deer, bears, that sort of thing. We you did not see that. We did see a snake curse. on a trail. <laughs> we did see a snake. That was pretty cool. <laughs> and I had Christopher move it. <laughs> yeah. 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 But, yeah, the basalt columns were really cool. I mean, I didn't think that that sort of geologic formation existed there, but it's from, I guess, old volcano acti- volcanic activity like Hundreds of thousands of years ago. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was really, really neat. Yeah. I agree. Um, all right. Last state in today's episode. West Virginia. Mountain mama. All right. Mountain mama. Okay. Um, what is your thing to do in West Virginia? New River Gorge National Park. Mine too. Yeah. I mean, West Virginia is wild, literally. I mean, there's so much beautiful country there. Like my brother yeah. went to uh, Marshall in um, Huntington for grad school where he studied herpetology or the study of reptiles and amphibians and he did his thesis on the eastern box turtle and that involved him going out and hiking in the woods of West Virginia all the time because he had to research and find them and we went with him sometimes uh, when we were in town and it's just beautiful country land we went camping out there like very beautiful mountainous hilly um, part of the country but one of my favorites um 
one of my favorite races that we have done was the Hatfield McCoy. Yeah. It's, I mean, the countryside is beautiful, but New River Gorge National Park, it's over a big gorge. There's whitewater rafting that it's you can- over a big it's gorge. The end. Um, 70,000 acres of wilderness along the New River. Yes. And then you have the river that you can go whitewater rafting on, you know, fishing, et cetera, et cetera. Um, then there's the big bridge that everyone thinks of with the photo of New River Gorge, um, the opportunity to go mountain biking, hiking. And what I think is really cool is a Via Ferrata. I had a friend of mine, Amanda, she went to, uh, she did Via Ferrata when she went to New River Gorge. What is Via Ferrata? So Via Ferrata is, it's not really rock climbing, but it's like, you know how they'll have like, um, you know where you have like the big wire walks where you kind of walk yes. on it and then there's also like the um like the stairs out of the rocks yes. or the um sorry the ladder rungs, yeah yeah the rungs and you basically have to like clip on and like walk and clip on that was the via ferrata that she did oh that's cool yeah very um, adventurous yeah you mentioned you mentioned hiking um one of the view that you were mentioning i think is at long point mm-hmm. um one thing that you did not mention um, that I think would also be kind of cool is the African American Heritage Auto Tour, which tells the story oh, yeah. of black coal miners, railroad workers, and other community members um, that kind of helped build the region. Yeah. Um, I believe that that is self-guided through an app. Okay. Um, but I think that that would be a pretty cool aspect, too, especially because, I mean, as much as I love hiking, there's nothing like an afternoon. Um, without hiking. Yeah. If you get it done in the morning. It's nice. So, yeah. All right. Whoo. That, that was, was a big one. one. There was 14 states. Well, yeah. Thanks, Delaware. <laughs> and Maryland. I, I don't know why I, I had... I still don't... I don't know why I put Maryland in the Northeast, but... Because well, that one I got. But, like, Delaware, I was like... For whatever reason, I've never pictured that as a southeastern state. We're, you know what? We are going to have to come up with our own regional breakdown of the states. I don't know. Anyway. But yeah, let us know your thoughts of your favorite things to do in these states. Uh, you can always reach us on Twitter at WW Honeymoon, Instagram at Worldwide Honeymoon, or email cat at WorldwideHoneymoon.com. But thank you guys so much for tuning in. Thanks, guys. Thanks for tuning in. And don't forget to rate and review our podcast. It takes less than a few minutes and really helps other people find us. Also, if you're enjoying this awesome free information on both the blog and podcast, when you're booking your next trip, head over to WorldwideHoneymoon.com slash resources and use the links provided. We earn a small commission at no cost to you when you book through these links. And these are all brands and companies we know, love, and use, like Skyscanner for finding the best flight prices, World Nomads for the best travel insurance, TripAdvisor for hotel bookings and reviews, and even Amazon for all of your travel purchases. Thank you for tuning in. We really appreciate it. Wherever you are, wherever you go, remember to make every day a worldwide honeymoon.